Well, in fact, I have to thank you for coming here the last day of this annual meeting, Saturday, Barcelona. So I appreciate really your interest and I'm really grateful that you are here and I hope to be uh, enough interesting to, to explain enough interesting uh, aspects of archaeology and its public dimension for you to have uh, been um, happy to have made this, this decision. So, uh, to begin with, um, well, um, I want to begin with a quote. Normally I don't, do not do that, but I think, well, what's happening? Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, this is uh, a quote of, uh, perhaps some of you know, uh, Bianco Gandinelli, uh, at least the, those of you who work in classical archaeology surely know. Um, he's, this, this Italian archaeologist wrote um, 40 years ago uh, the following sentence in a book called Intro Introduction to Archaeology. He said, it is necessary <coughs> to establish a positive relation between archaeology and our contemporary culture since if such a relationship does not exist, we should conclude to abandon the study of studies as happened with other disciplines that at times were booming. Uh, interestingly, a few months ago, uh, the president, the very president of this Asso European Association of Archaeologists, addressed to the members of, in similar terms in the context of this annual meeting which finishes today. Felipe the other wrote, uh, Archaeologists as a discipline and archaeological practice at the level of each of us as individual practitioners has to be concerned with the big issues of humanity, those that provide insight into what it means to be human, our relationship with the environment, sustainability, mobility, memory, tradition, community, identity, consciousness, action, and the like. Probably all of us who are in this room and today, I probably almost, also most of the participants of, the mini, of this meeting will uh, support the words of the one on the, other, on the other. However, the fact that after 40 years, it is necessary to remember explicitly that archaeology has as its mission to address and influence in a significant way those big issues that affect society and people gives us to understand that this task probably the most important one, is still pending. Well, in the minutes that follow, I will try to review uh, not only if, if indeed archaeology, archaeological research uh, is linked to what in the field of didactics of history is called socially relevant questions, but also which are the channels that archaeology can use to establish meaningful bridges to that humanity to which we are supposed to serve. Uh, how, can we, how can we approach the kind of relationships that are established between that archaeological research and its beneficiaries? To answer that question, and given that it is impossible and that it's not the purpose of this talk to make an exhaustive study of these relationships, I have chosen to, do, to draw simply a rough approximation to uh, avoid speaking from commonplace or in fact. Uh, therefore, in the last weeks, I have dedicated myself to have a closer, not very close, but a closer look at the Scopus web page, trying uh, that the information that it contains about the impact of publications illuminates me a little bit about those relations. Uh, what I have done is simply to make a search in Scopus with, on the term of archaeology, and it has resulted in a certain a number of total and yearly publications, as you can see in the figures of this slide. But if we look more closely only at the 10 most cited papers, okay, with 1,280 citations, the most cited one, and with 477 citation, the last cited one of this top ten list, and then we make a projection, don't, with my mathematics procedure as well, a little bit, you know, paramathematic, but it's an approximation, okay? And we make a projection of these views and downloads, don't downloads of these some ten articles from the publisher's web, we arrive at a pretty sum of uh, 
let me see, uh, 16,141 readers. Okay, but it's a, you know, a misguiding figure because it, then we divide that in the almost 30 years in which in the span of these 10 uh, papers, we come to the conclusion that they are read every year only by 130 people. That means that only 83 people read each of these top um, um, papers each year. So I'm not going now in detail of my calculation procedures, which would be surely have to be very much nuanced and adjusted to multiple uh, variables that I have not considered. But I think it has helped me, and I think I may help you too, to capture the real impact dimension that is in terms of number of readers of that scientific production. If this is the number of readers of the most supposed important papers in the recent history of archaeology written in English, so to a larger or the most largest, the largest audience, we can assume that other articles or papers that don't appear in the Scopus page and are written in other languages have even less readers yearly. So what we have at the end is that, is that it is a very fragmented and scarce impact, the very fragmented and scarce impact of our research papers. So we have now here a very a first diagnostic variable. Uh, let's go on the size no, of the research, uh, the audience of direct, or direct audience of our research. And let's see now the topics of archaeological research and see if they match no, with this uh, with these big issues we are talking about. Uh, so but, but first which which are these these big issues? Not everyone talk about big issues and uh, significant relationships, which which is what we what is necessary, what humanity needs. No? So, it would be a long discussion, no? and everyone can, we can argue, and we, of course, we could not solve here, uh, in, in not even having the whole day or the whole week or the whole month. But I have only to, to have a frame of reference. I have chosen this uh, 16 goals uh, of the United Nations for 2030 as the main uh, important, the most important issues that humanity uh, needs. <coughs> input from, on also from research. Uh, you see the no poverty, uh, zero hunger, good wealth and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, uh, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduce inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, and peace, justice, and strong institutions. Um, and so what does archaeology in relation to these 16 goals? No? So I could also have proposed no, a, a theoretical uh, or, um, definition, but I prefer to do like classic uh, science and work with, with data. Okay? Um, two years ago, Anthony Sickler published a paper in the Internet Archaeology Digital Journal in which, through the concepts that appear in the keywords and abstracts of archaeology publication in Scopus between 2004 and 2013, he proposed a conceptual map of the discipline and the interrelation among large thematic areas of archaeology research and practice. Through an analysis with a so-called post viewer program, Sinclair outlined different clusters that finally group in seven major topics. So, since you will not need to uh, see the, 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 the names of the topics I see, I uh, will read them for you. There, on the top uh, right, no, yeah, right from your perspective, are the dating techniques, This uh, the next Big cluster, uh, scientific practice and archaeology. This yellow one here is landscape survey and geophysics. This red circle here is uh, surround this core language of archaeology concepts. Then here on your left, population and genetics. Further uh, there is diet and subsistence. And the last one, this blue spot you probably see from 
from, from your seats is uh, landscape analysis and environmental change. Uh, can I um, send? Okay. <laughs> if you see uh, this big blue circle of landscape studies also matches with this big uh, yellow um, circle of landscape survey, this scientific practice of anarchology and dating techniques, can we, we can merge that together? So we have a big dedication or aiming of archaeology research papers on landscape uh, studies in different um, ways and also a very important production of research results on the very, um, the very methods of archaeology including datation techniques. Um, um, if we now compare no, this map, this conceptual map, with the goals of the sustainable goals of the United Nations, uh, we have three uh, trees, probably this tree, climate action, life below water, life of land, that can be linked in a way with landscape analysis and environmental change. Okay. Uh, there will be another one this year, good health and well-being that, yeah, since a certain degree, can be connected with diet and subsistence population and genetics. But the other fields, mainly those related with well-being, with democracy, with standards of life, with equity, are not, um, are not uh, touched by actually only in this uh, core language of archaeology cluster. So let's have a look in this cluster. Um, I'm sorry it will be difficult to see from there, but um, if you look more closely you know, to, to this very little, into this, to that area, there are very little uh, concepts, there are few concepts that are related to the bridges that can be established between the discipline and the outer world, to say. For example, the concepts of, let me see, it's even so small that I even can see it, yeah, of dialogue here, or of education, yeah, are just in the margin and have a little size that can be, uh, mm, mm, that is the same that you see there are diameter or computer, it has the same, um, the same importance in the, con in the concepts used in archaeology as this other kind of, of concept. So we can, we can say really that there is no much the, that uh, archaeologists think about society, about the needs of society in terms of this United Nations goals, but they don't uh, reflect very much about their implementation. Uh, so the question is, why a discipline like archaeology, that although, although very fragmented and small in its research impact, but willing to influence in socially and cultural relevant issues, such as those that show the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, seems to barely respond to or to worry about them. Okay? Should climate change be only real contribution to humanity? Of course, it's a major, uh, a major contribution, but have we nothing to say about democracy, equity, cohesion, human conflicts, or human identity? It gives the impression that Yankee Vandinelli's prediction would be materializing already, and that only the inertia of academic logic allows archaeology to subsist as it is, as we see in the scale of the daily amount of publication in Scorpius. In my view, um, the, real, uh, the answer is that the real impact of archaeology on those relevant questions, on those United Nations objectives, it's only possible through what I call stories, which, if you want, if you prefer, can be called in, more, in a more disciplinary way, like for example, dialogic local practices with social and cultural relevance. However, 
I prefer to call them stories. So, uh, what, which should be the characteristics of these stories? So, these archaeological meaningful stories uh, should be about experiential engagement. I have written that specifically because for me it's, you know, like a statement, okay? Uh, there has to be experiential engagement with or in archaeological context to address specific individual or social situations, problems or conflicts. They, we are expecting that they have a long-lasting effect and significant effect on people's lives. Of course, we have engaging uh, experiences going to different places, uh, visiting or whatever, but has that really a long-lasting and significant effect on people's lives? We, the, the aim of these stories have to be to improve personal or and collective futures in a qualitative way. And they have to be, be based on a significant dialogue, dialogue made for a shared culture between archaeology and what I call the outer world. And in what remains of this talk, oh, this 20 minutes, no? I, I will explain to you six different stories to look for another kind of impact closer to Bianchi Svandinelli's concept of positive relation between archaeology and contemporary culture, more than more different or different from those from the Scorpius impact score. So, our first story, okay? Our first story is about educational regular activities. Uh, with primary and secondary students which are carried on by an educational public service here in Catalonia. This activity has been designed by a mixed team of teachers and archaeologists using the very abundant gender research on prehistoric figurines. The activity consists in proposing to the participants to create their own figurines after having discussed different examples of these types of objects, following how I am following the um, concepts and ideas that come out from feminist research. In terms of impact, using gender research on prehistoric figurines by primary and secondary school students helps to deconstruct binary gender stereotypes among children and teenagers, allows to discuss in common the diversity of cultural approaches to the human body and support, support, supports open discussion about gender identity among young people. The second story. The second story is also about education and teenagers. In this case, however, it is not a single isolated activity as in the previous case, but a whole educational <coughs> project aimed at teenagers between 16 and 18 years. On Thursday, Alfredo González Rival talked about the challenge to incorporate conflict as a central issue in archaeology and specifically of the Spanish Civil War. This story is about how to expand these reflections beyond academic boundaries. The girls and boys you see in the picture are students of a secondary school in Balaguer, in inland Catalonia, where in year 1938, a stream be planified to place around a little hill called El Merengue. It involved very young soldiers from the Republican side. There Di were many of them. The project consists that these girls and boys of roughly the same age of those soldiers who died there make an in-depth historical, archaeological and landscape research along an academic year, including on-site activities, reenactments to finally serve as guides for open visits to El Merengue for families and general public. So we can say that the impact of this ongoing project using archaeological based research on Spanish Civil War um, um, yeah, is aimed to develop critical thinking on the recent past and the links to the present to analyze the material mechanism on impact on conflicts and also to empathize with the victims of war and to vindicate their historical recognition. The third story. The third story, I, I, have, I have borrowed this, this third story from one dear colleague 
of mine, Juan Gibaja from the Spanish Research Council in Barcelona, who is carrying out in collaboration with a large interdisciplinary team, uh, what can be called an inclusive archaeology project, mainly in this very neighborhood of El Raval, where uh, this meeting is having uh, taken place. No? I have here written the uh, link of his project. I think it's worthwhile that you all look what the wonderful work he is doing. In any case, um, the project um, aim, um, that they are carrying out um, is aimed to um, make student groups to participate from archaeological research in very different ways. One of these activities uh, consisted, uh, that was a couple of months ago, in the participation of Down syndrome children and teenagers in the excavation directed by Dr. Xavier Oms of the University of Barcelona of the Neolithic uh, site of Quixira de Vinovi, not very far away from Barcelona. Um, I have chosen this special activity because I think that by means of that use of archaeological fieldwork methodology and techniques, another kind of impact at the other one was achieved. Um, it was, um, it was achieved to stimulate the capacities of children and young persons with Down syndrome to reinforce the self-esteem and effective social integration from, of these children and teenagers, and also an important aspect, they, it, they, it ensured their universal access to culture and science. Um, story number four. Um, in the previous stories, I have talked about identity, memory, inclusion, and equity. This fourth story is about cohesion uh, through place attachment. A few years ago, uh, the local government of St. Just des Verne, a small town close to Barcelona, used a well-known Iron Age site of its municipality as an icon to create a common arena of creative discussions around its very name. La Roca del Moro, the Rock of the Moors. The idea was to engage both old and new habitants, old in the sense of living from, you know, from far, for, for centuries or decades in the city, and new habitants that were arriving to the city, to engage them in a shared cultural game combining archaeological research, oral tradition, and new technologies. Uh, feedback was very high and it was the beginning of new sets of similar oriented activities that still are working. Um, I, I know some of you are not Spanish nor Catalan speakers, but can I put this small video of one minute, minute? But you will understand it's a, a game, a quiz about the name of this rock of the Moor Moor, because here in, 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 all of, in Spain mainly, you know, the idea of antiquity, the popular idea of antiquities, it's related always to the Moors. So, so they ask to solve no, the confusion or the contra apparent contradiction between um, the name and the real historical age of, of, this, of this site. Let's see if it works. I hope so. Well, it's not, it's not needed because it has sound. Let's, if we can fly. Es que yo tampoco soy muy buena, yo soy muy mala. Ah, espera, espera, eh, que igual. Ya está, es que no tenía sonido. Ya está. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, eh. Enrique, no mal. Espera, ¿cuál es la? Espera, Sorry, eh? That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not another annual party. And it's just story for Ida. Okay? Now, I go back. Let's try 
again. Yeah. Sure. Let's uh, let's give it one more chance. Yeah. And if not, yeah. es que si nos ves ahí vamos a So the idea of this, this short video that was distributed among schools, associations, it was also in the local TV, and they asked people, every kind of people, to propose an answer to this quiz in a creative way. And well, the feedback, as I, saw, I told you, it, it was very, very important, and they have continued doing this kind of, um, uh, of activities and projects of interrelation between elements of heritage, of local heritage, very significant ones, and uh, new media and participatory uh, works, and um, they are continuing doing that. And we will have the opportunity as experts to participate in the design course of these activities. So, okay. uh, so this, in this case, this specific case, and let's come back, I will, it will be not, no other video. In this case, using research on Iron Age uh, um, research and conservation, because sometimes we think, uh, what's the sense of conservation? Here it has a sense. In this case, it's used by municipalities, by local authorities that want to, in this case, also create a cohesive uh, um, policy. They, it serves to observe and reflect on everyday landscapes, to encourage a creative appropriation of local heritage elements, and to compare, in this case, historical, archaeological interpretations and oral relations. The fifth story, so I'm coming to end. No? Uh, we have talked a lot, I have mentioned a lot, a lot of topics now. I will put an example, a story uh, that deals about sustainability. Okay, uh, this very big issue, what it is. In, in this case, is uh, the, an example of a small, also a well, mill town of uh, Andalusia. Uh, it's called Valencina de la Concepción, perhaps uh, some some of the, of, the, of the people that are sitting here knows, knows uh, this town and the site because it has an impressive megalithic uh, mm -hmm. um, archaeological record. And this town is very near to Seville. In this picture you can see that very well here in the forefront you see one of the entrances of this megalith. That this entrance was uh, um, modified in the 19th century, uh, 19th century, but it's, you see, you know that it's uh, very good to say. It's just here, okay? And there, on the back, the, you see the city of Sevilla. Uh, what happened in Valentina? Valentina is a, a place, a, a city that in the um, last 20 years, a uh, whole range of uh, urban expansion was planned by the regional and local government and also, of course, of building companies. Um, what the citizens of Valentina did was to <coughs> use archaeological research <coughs> on the landscape and the very mm, concept of uh, landscape of, for human use uh, to um, stop and control what uh, were being uh, a lot of, of laws and norms that were uh, destroying you know, the, very, the, the concept or the physical appearance of this uh, megalithic space. No? They have, uh, it has been, um, it is very, uh, they are very um, active, and what is very surprising and also very uh, flattering in this case for archaeologists, because they worked together with this uh, 
inhabitants of Valentina is that almost all these uh, civic associations have the name of or in some relation with archaeology. For example, there's one of this very uh, active association, it's called the Dolmens, Association of the Dolmens, or for example, one of the main, uh, another of the main associations of this, uh, of this town is called Valentina Habitable, and they take uh, this, uh, this, um, this uh, motifs here that are the typical uh, motifs of the coverage idols that were found inside the, the, the megalith. So, in this case, using research on megalithic sites by citizens' association, uh, they, um, they not only they tried, but they achieved to preserve megalithic landscape as a tool to assure habitable conditions of the town. <coughs> they were also able to stop urban speculation and to denounce lack of transparency of political decisions. So, and my last story is about uh, a place, perhaps some of you know uh, this place, perhaps some and some of you visited it because it was an excursion to this little town uh, in, in one of the activities of the, of the, as one of the activities of the meeting. Um, the, this last story is also about sustainability, but also about the creative and shared use of public space. No? In Kabul is the place where the rock paintings are, that are the logo of this annual meeting. It's a small town, no more than 200 inhabitants, and a few months ago, uh, the major for them, this site uh, represents a way, a hope for, for surviving as small community in, in a model of Europe in which rural communities, rural life is vanishing. And so the major uh, wanted to underline you know, this main role of the archaeological site in, in, the, um, in the future of this town. They asked uh, the uh, street artist Lee Brick a huge painting of her interpretation of the rock paintings that you can see here among the Mm, rural houses of El Kogul. Uh, you can, if you are interested, you can look at the uh, web page of the artist. It's Lily Brick. It's a Catalan um, um, street artist. So, using research on prehistoric rock art at El Kogul by street artist Lily Brick, it was possible to show the creative and collective use of public space to enhance multivocal readings of the material traces of the past and to vindicate the vitality and projection towards the future of the community. So to end, that's great. Yeah? Okay. Which can be received to build this kind of meaningful stories? Uh, what steps should archaeological research keep and make in order to uh, achieve this, um, this impact no, on society? Uh, and I think that the first one is that the results of archaeological research, of course, must be available to society in understable and accessible form. Exhibitions, publication, dissemination of all types in media, as well as to its disciplinary practice, that means excavation, access to excavation, to collections, etc. A second point, and I mean perhaps it's a more um, controversial one, but I think that research lines and the use of archaeological results cannot be established exclusively by the archaeologists themselves. Archaeology should not be only business between friends or between enemies, it depends, no? we know all that. No? So, communities, social groups and individual persons and their needs and requirements are the ones that should value the relevance of research. Undoubtedly, as I said, it's controversial, but I think it's worth to think about. And another difficult aspect, but I think it's also uh, crucial, is that for um, the um, stories are always about connection and dialogue. And connection and dialogue, uh, dialogue to be meaningful has to be established. So this could be the end of my proposals here today, but since we have started with impact factors, I want to end with other types of impact factors and leave on the screen, a last reflection to be you to value it. So these are other impact factors different from the Scopius one, 
but we think we have to consider out all, it all for the future of our discipline. Thank you very much.